So I like what we've done so far, but I actually think that most of these blocks that we've created are really pretty basic and unfortunately somewhat limited. And I want you to take a a step back for a second and think about the blocks that exist in Scratch. Most of the blocks in Scratch are not like the blocks that we just have that say do this one thing, circle, square. There are a few of them, um, right? I mean, pen up and pen down, next costume, next backdrop, uh, show and hide. Those are all examples of blocks that simply are do one thing and only one thing. But most of the blocks that we have actually have the ability for us to provide parameters, numbers that are used in the creation of that particular uh, shape or, or in the performance of that particular command. So for example, we didn't have a move block that always moved 10 steps. We have a block that says move 10 steps, but we can change this 10 to 100. We can change this 100 to 75. So we can move different amounts, different amounts, different times. I want to show you how we do the same thing here for square. I don't want a square block that's always going to make squares of 75. I want square blocks that are sometimes going to make squares of 75 and sometimes make squares of 100 and sometimes make squares of 10. I mean, what I really want is a block uh, that says square uh, size 10 square size 100 where the 10 100 is just like this is it's a block uh, it's an it's a it's a circle we can put information in and we can do that with my blocks and that's the additional uh, features that we didn't play with before so I want to do this I want to type in here square size and so I'm going to do that. That's sort of what I want my block to look like. But now after this, I want to have the ability to put in uh, the number that I'm going to be using. And so you'll notice there are three features down here that we can add. We can add numerical or text input, which is what I want here. I can add a Boolean uh, check, a Boolean condition question, uh, which I'm not going to do in this unit. We're not going to use that kind of thing, but it is there. And then I can add additional labels, and I'll show you with one of the, in one of the future videos how we'll use that as well. But let's just do this. I want to say, I want a square of size, and I, I need to give this a name. What is, it, what is this called? Well, this is really the length or the size of, of each side of my square. And so I can say square size length, right? And I can make that. And now we get something very, very different here. I'm going to really move these out of the way because I want to be able to see this clearly. First of all, notice what the block looks like. The block says, I want a square of size, and I can easily put in here, I want a square of size 100. I want a square of size 75. I want a square of size 20. I can put a number in there. Okay, I can put a number in there, but how do I write this code here so that it uses it? Well, again, a square is really basic, right? A square is four times I want to move forward and turn 90 degrees. And so the question is, how far forward? When I drug this, drug this block out, it said move 75 steps. But how many steps do I want to take? Well, I really want to take whatever they give me in this block, right? I mean, if somebody calls the square, oops, went right past it, they're going to call the square and they say, I want a square with sides of 150. I don't want to use that information of 150 here to move 150 steps. And the way that I can do that is that up here in the definition when it says define the square of size length, this length block right here that length peg can actually be pulled out of there and I can drop it in here. And so this says whatever they gave me when they said square of size 150, I want you to use that 150 and move 150 steps. So I'm in fact going to get rid of the single format square, right? My original square only made one size of square, but this one makes multiple sizes of squares. So I can say make a square of size 150, 
right? make much bigger squares. Or I can say, oh, no, that's too big. I really want squares of size 100. So, right? so I can just change this. I can rerun it. Now I'm producing much smaller squares. Oh, no, I still want even smaller. I want squares of size, oops, not, I want squares of size 15. Right? You can make any size square that you like. And what's really fun with this is that we can actually make squares of different sizes all at the same time. So let me show you one quick addition, final addition in this video. Let's make a variable called size. Let's set size to 20, an arbitrary number, and I want to make a square then of that size, which is size 20. Now, so if I run this now, I get 20, I get 10 squares, 20 each. Makes kind of a cool pattern, doesn't it? But what I really can do then to have fun with this is to say every time this loop runs, I want to make the next square bigger. So I want you to change the size by 10, which means the first square is going to be uh, 20 pixels big, the second square is going to be 30, and then 40, and then 50, all the way up to 120 pixels. And so we're making bigger and bigger squares as we go. Right? And you can do some really fun and interesting things playing around with this by, by exploring with this. Uh, so for example, let me actually show you this. If I change this to negative 10, uh, actually, let me change this to negative 5 and this to positive 5. And the reason I'm doing 5 is because, I, because I'm changing the size by 10, I want to split the difference. And now, I can just draw squares getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Each time I moved 5 pixels up and over, but I made it 10 bigger, so it's 5 pixels on the left, 5 pixels on the right, 5 pixels at the top, 5 pixels at the bottom. And you can do all sorts of things by changing those variables.